Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus. I'm back from sabbatical. Hope you missed me. Um, I uh, thought I would um, review and recommend some of the amazing books uh, and interesting books I've uh, looked at over my sabbatical. And uh, one of the first ones I read is this one. It's called You Are What You Love, The Spiritual Power of Habit by James K.A. Smith. And uh, I really recommend it. I, uh, there's so many kind of underlinings in this, it's untrue. Um, it's a really interesting book. I got it because um, of the strap line, The Spiritual Power of Habit. I thought, oh, this might have something to say into this idea of, of, of having a holy habitus. And it really does. It's a kind of a, a theological framework for a lot of the stuff I've been thinking about, which is really affirming. Um, but it is, it is fascinating. He talks about how we as human beings are worshippers, whether we like it or not. Um, we, we, are, we can't not worship, we can't not love. We're hardwired to do that, but we don't always love what we think we do. And, uh, and he talks about how our loves are shaped by our cultural habitus, by what he, he refers to as the liturgies that orient our loves. Um, so, for example, he says there, he talks about secular liturgies and how in daily life we are bombarded with secular liturgies. Um, maybe through advertising or through film and television or through cultural experience, just as through the structuring of our physical environment and things like that. Our loves are oriented towards uh, worldly gods, um, images of the good life and how we might flourish. Uh, you know, billboards that say, you know, you could look like this, you should be like this and so on. And, and in contrast, he argues that the, the church, that Christians need to get far more intentional about um, developing the liturgical uh, life um, that will orient us back towards God and the love of God uh, and help us to love God so that we are propelled by that love and that love is what shapes our decisions and actions and ethics and so on. And, uh, and so he, he makes an argument that we need to recover um, something of our liturgical heritage. Now, I, I really uh, fully agreed with, I think, the theology and, the, and theory, and much of it anyway, in, in the first half of the book. Some of the application I felt he got a little bit carried away uh, in, def in terms of defending traditional inherited church. I think he has a valid point that there's some real riches there that we shouldn't throw out, as it were, the baby with the bathwater. Um, but I felt like sometimes he got a little bit... Uh, um, strident in his dismissal of attempts by the contemporary church to be relevant um, because there is a challenge to be incarnational. Now he did caveat that um, in the rest of the book um, but um, but he, he also talks interestingly not just about how churches should be more tuned in to how they might uh, be more liturgical in a way that uh, orients us to God but also how we might look at in, in the home and in our parenting and in the world of work we can uh, creates, as it were, divine liturgies that shape us and point us back to God and over the course of time sort of make sure that our under the hood consciousness uh, is, is pointing back to him. Um, it's a fascinating book. I really kind of recommend you read it and uh, have a look if you're interested. It's a very accessible way into um, his thinking and um, yeah, explore the spiritual power of habit because you are what you love.